Hi, it's Steph, and we're at Lowe's, and they have a bunch of new inventory. There are perennials as well as shrubs, and even some annuals have started to roll in. So let's go ahead and take a look at the April inventory at Lowe's. And they received some Armeria or Sea Thrift. If you are a follower of my channel, you know that I planted a drift of thrift in the last couple of years, and I really love this little plant. It has these really beautiful blooms atop a wiry stem that look like these little pom poms, and they bloom for a really long time. And even when they're not in bloom, you get this little tuft of green grass at the bottom, which is really attractive. But this puts out blooms for me from spring all the way through fall. And this variety here is the Monrovia Sea Dreams Thrift, Armeria Sea Sweet Dreams, and it is $5.98 for this little quart container here. I did have someone tell me recently that in their store, their Monrovia quart or container was $12.98. I'm guessing it's a bigger size, but fortunately for us at our store, we do have these smaller ones at a more affordable price point. These like full sun, they also do not like a lot of moisture. They prefer to have a well-draining soil. So if you have too much moisture, you could rot them at the crown and then they might not return for you as a perennial. They want six plus hours of direct sun. They get to be 10 to 12 inches in height and 10 to 12 inches in width. And they bloom spring, summer, and fall. Hardy down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Such a sweet little bloom. And most of these are still in a tight bud form. So if you planted them in your garden, you would get to enjoy their bloom show. They have a couple of varieties of primula or primrose, and this is a really deep red color, almost very similar to like a rose that you would see on Valentine's Day, right? And the variety on this one is Ballerina Valentine Primrose. How interesting. I didn't even know that that was the name of it. And look at that. Coincidentally, um, it is what it's called. And these are supposed to be perennial. I have never grown primrose in my garden, so I'm not sure whether or not they would be perennial for me here in my zone six, but let me know in the comments. They look to like partial sun, and these are 1098. And let's see, they get six to 12 inches in height and six to 12 inches in width, and they bloom in spring, hardy down to negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And they like a semi-moist soil. But these are really pretty. They have another variety, let's go check that out. And here is this beauty, the Primrose Ballerina Nectarine. Look at the color on this one. A golden yellow with those fuchsia pink tips. Really beautiful. And even the foliage is really pretty, this tuft of green leaves. Now this one says that it likes part sun and it is perennial and it likes three to six hours of morning sun. Morning sun is usually weaker than afternoon sun. So if a plant likes part sun, morning is usually best. And like semi-moist soil gets to be six to 12 inches in height and six to 12 inches in width. Hardy down to negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. This one is gorgeous. This armeria is a little more open. The pink is a little bit brighter than the other one we looked at. So the one we looked at earlier is this color, like a, almost like a lavender pink, almost purple. And then this one's a much brighter pink. And this variety is called De Dre Dreamaria Daydream Sandwort. And this one's also $5.98. Let's see, the size might be similar. The growth habit and size is similar. It has this nice thick strappy foliage with a wiry stem and that round ball-shaped bloom. It likes, let's see, six hours of direct sun, full sun, and 10 to 12 inches in height, 10 to 12 inches in width, and hardy down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Also blooms spring, summer, and fall. So same, same specs, just a bit brighter pink in this Dreamaria Daydream Sandwort. And Creeping Phlox, a beautiful spring blooming ground cover. This is the color that I have in my garden. It's a really light lavender. It is gorgeous and it is just in bud form and getting ready to bloom for me. Um, I have some daffodils, the uh, Ice Follies daffodils that will bloom first and then followed by this really beautiful Phlox. And even when it's not in bloom, you get just a little tuft of what looks to be just green grass. So really pretty, um, it's trailing over walls. Um, this is the early spring lavender creeping Phlox. It likes full sun. It blooms in spring. These are 898 and they are hardy down to a zone two. So negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, very hardy. They get to be six to eight inches in height and 18 to 24 inches in width. Now they do spread horizontally, so they get wider than they do tall. Really easy to control their size. If they start growing somewhere you don't want them, you just take some garden shears and cut them right back. And they do really well. And even to transplant them, you just take a little piece that has some roots, tuck them into the soil, and then you'll start a new plant. So really great perennial.
This one here is called Blue, so it's a little, it's slightly darker than the lavender one that we just looked at. Um, so not too much difference. This might even be the one that I have. This one is called the uh, Early Spring Blue Creeping Phlox, and they also have some pink varieties. Here's the beautiful dark pink color. That's called Early Spring Dark Pink Creeping Phlox. They all have similar specs, and they all like full sun and a well-draining soil. Some beautiful columbine, a wonderful perennial for spring that likes part shade. And this one has beautiful foliage as well. So even when it's not in bloom, you get this really pretty foliage. You can see this one has lots of buds getting ready to open. And the variety is Winky Purple and White Columbine. It's a perennial for part sun. And let's see here. <clears throat> it gets to be 12 to 14 inches in height and 12 to 14 inches in width and it blooms spring through summer hardy down to negative 30 degrees fahrenheit these are really hardy plants i absolutely love columbine these bloom for me right around the time that my dicentro the bleeding heart start blooming and it's a really pretty spring combination they have a really beautiful shaped bloom they have almost like those spikes in the back and look at that the pollinators absolutely love these gorgeous and the Boston ferns are out. Now these are the one and a half gallon hangers for $16.98. Something to keep in mind here in my zone six, we're still a couple of weeks out from our last frost date and these do not like it when the temperatures drop too low. So if you do purchase some of these Boston ferns, make sure that you would take them in and protect them in the event that we get a couple of nights of frost. And look how gorgeous this forsythia looks in full bloom. What a beautiful spring shrub. Now I recently worked on painting a fence and this just pops so beautifully against a dark fence. This variety is the Show Off for Scythia by Proven Winners. It is a full sun shrub, hardy in USDA growing zones five through eight or down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And it gets to be five to six feet tall and wide. And it's very early blooming. It blooms for us here in my zone six around April. After these bloom, you start getting the rhododendrons as well as the um, lilacs. And here's a really beautiful spring combination with the forsythia this pgm rhododendron it's a small leaf rhododendron with these really beautiful light pink lavender purple type flowers and it looks like the bees absolutely love it there's one in here getting a snack of nectar right now but if you wanted some early spring color a forsythia paired with one of these pgm rhododendrons is a great combination now the PGM rhododendron or the small leaf rhododendron will typically bloom a lot sooner than the large leaf rhododendron. They're also more compact. Now these only get to be, let's see, five feet tall and five feet wide. So they stay relatively small in comparison to some of the older rhododendrons or the large leaf, which can get fairly large in time. And the PGM rhododendron likes part sun. Rhododendrons in general are understory trees, so they like to grow in the shade of the canopy of other trees and it is hardy down to a zone four or down to negative 20 degrees fahrenheit and this container here let's see is a 1.71 gallon for 26.98 comparison on the leaf size of the traditional rhododendron you can see that those leaves are quite large broad leaf evergreen and then here is the pgm which they're relatively small in comparison both are evergreens and really great spring blooming plants and a really beautiful pyrus that I recently had bloom in my garden is this one here by Monrovia. It is called the Enchanted Forest Impish Elf. It is a dwarf pyrus. And pyrus is also known as uh, Japanese Andromeda um, or Japonica. And it's a really pretty shrub that gets really early season color. This blooms for me in very, very early spring. So I had this in bloom in my garden in March. And it gets these really pretty bell-shaped blooms. Let me show them to you. Look at that. Now it starts off a brighter pink and then it fades to this lighter pink before going almost white. And it's evergreen, so you have this greenery all year round, followed by these really pretty blooms. So let me go ahead and show you the specs on this one. It likes part sun. This shrub here is $49.98 and this looks to be about a two gallon container. There is the shape and growth habit of it. It gets to be about um, three to five feet tall and wide and it is hardy down to negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. It will bloom late winter to early spring and it likes moist but well-draining soil. 
they still have lots of arborvitae, both the emerald green and the green giant. So if you're looking to create a living fence or privacy hedge this season, now would be a great time to do that. I actually have a video on my channel comparing the two if you're curious about what the differences might be. And here is a really beautiful evergreen that I absolutely love in my garden, and it is a Hinoki cypress. Look at this. It's Slender Hinoki Fall Cypress by Monrovia. This one here is $94. It looks to be about a three gallon container or so. And this conifer here says that it likes full sun. And I actually have quite a few Hinoki in my garden and they love full sun, a well draining soil. They're hardy in USDA growing zones four through eight and um, down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. They're pretty slow growing, but this one here says that it will reach eight to 12 feet tall and four to five feet wide. And I just love how it has a really graceful arching habit and this foliage is really beautiful. If you're looking for some affordable statuary, Lowe's is a great spot to find some. My Lowe's actually has quite a bit right now, but unfortunately they don't have the prices listed on any of them. Um, I wish that I could share that with you, but because they're not marked, um, I'm not sure how much they are. But they have bird baths and some of these are quite pretty with really intricate detail and they even have some concrete benches in the back there. You get the two corbel bottom pieces as well as the top piece that sits on top. And then look at these really pretty pineapples. These would be really pretty, um, one on either side, say to an entrance to a garden or even on a patio or a front entryway. And even some of these pedestal urn type planters. They have a really classy and elegant look to them. Now, in terms of how durable they would be, I would say that they're not going to be as high quality as, say, Unique Stone um, or even, um, you know, Campania International. They have really beautiful pieces. But if you wanted something affordable for a similar look, you could probably seal these with a concrete sealer and protect them over winter by covering them with plastic, and they probably would last a few years for you. Now, of course, you could only cover these with plastic if you don't have anything planted in them. So if you use them for things like annuals, then yes, they would be a good candidate to cover. But if you have something on them like planted like an evergreen that you want to keep year round, at that point you probably would be better off just trying to seal them. And in case you're curious, these do have drain holes in them, which would be really important because this is a concrete piece. It would be difficult to do that at home without risking um, cracking them. So yes, they do have drainage. And if you like turtle statuary, they also have this one here, and it does happen to have a price on it. This cement turtle is $35.98. Sometimes they even get some really cute dogs, but today they only have these turtles. And here is some more Hinoki Cypress. Now these are a smaller container. They're by the Lowe's House brand, which means they're going to be more affordable. Um, they are, let's see the varieties, a dwarf gracilis Hinoki Cypress. And these, the dwarf, just means that it grows at a slower growth rate. It likes full sun. These are $29.98, and it gets to be six feet in height and four feet in width. It is hardy down to a zone four or negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. I absolutely love these. Look at that, so cute. And a couple more really beautiful evergreens. I absolutely love evergreens in the garden. They provide year-round interest and a lot of structure. This is a blue spruce standard. Uh, Picea globosa is what they call them. And look at this beautiful color. Now, anytime that you have a golden yellow shrub or a blue shrub or tree, you wanna keep them in a lot of sun. So they like full sun in order to keep the most beautiful, vibrant color. Look at this. So these are typically more expensive because it takes quite a bit of time to train a tree um, into this form, right? Because they have to have a straight stem and then they have to keep limbing it upward um, and to keep the shape. So because of the work involved, you're typically going to pay a little bit more for these um, type of specialty conifers. So this here, the Globosa Spruce on Standard, Picea Globosa, is 119, which actually isn't even that bad. I pr I'm pretty sure I paid a little bit more than that, but at a local nursery uh, a couple of years ago, and I have one of these in my garden and I absolutely love it. Now these stay pretty compact because you can keep pruning it to keep this particular shape. So it can stay size controlled. It says the average size is as trained. It likes semi-moist but well-draining soil, and it is a slow growth rate, hardy down to a zone three or negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. This is absolutely beautiful, and they have two of them. So you could always look at them when you're choosing one to try to find one with a straighter stem. The caliper on the other one looks a little bit bigger than this one, and they're the same price. Here's the other one right here. And then they have these other topiaries on the side that they've um, started to train. Someone has trained them. They look like some kind of either cedar or arborvitae. Let's see if there's a tag here. 
It's a poodle emerald green arborvitae and it likes full sun and it's been trained to grow into three balls. Now in order for it to keep this shape, you will have to trim it because if you don't, it'll eventually start growing all into just one long tree again. So really important. If you want to keep the topiary shape, it is going to require a little bit of maintenance with some trimming. And here is a Hanoki that they've trained into a standard. Look at this. So cool. And let's see here. It's a dwarf Gracelis Hanoki Cypress, just like the one we saw in those containers for $29.98. And it also says that it gets to be six feet in height, four feet in width. This one's been trained into a standard, so you'd want to keep anything that would sprout along the stem there, you'd want to trim it to keep this pom-pom shape on top and keep it in a standard form. And the price on this one is, let's see, $129 for the standard form Hanoki. If you are a regular viewer of these garden center tour videos that I make, you will know that sometimes we find a really cool gem or rare find at these box store nurseries. Well, today this is the find at Lowe's. This is called a Spruce Abbey's Poosh. And the Poosh is a really slow growing dwarf evergreen that gets these characteristic small red cones on the tips in spring. And this one's already starting to get it. See that? I bought one that was a lot smaller than this, probably somewhere around $100, and it is tiny, but it was beautiful, and I loved it, and I went to a local nursery, and I picked it up, but this is a score. If you are looking for an Abbey's Poosh in a standard form that already has quite a bit of growth on it, because these slow-growing conifers take some time to get up to this size, this is a great, great price. Look at that. So $149 for this, it is deer resistant. I can say that they have not touched it in my garden. It says outstanding dwarf evergreen. And <clears throat> let's see, it says that the size is as trained because again, it's in a standard form. So you would prune it as you see fit. And it is hardy down to zone four or negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Absolutely beautiful. So pretty soon what's going to happen is it's gonna push out all of its spring um, growth and it'll push off all of last year's pine cones and it'll begin pushing out all of these really pretty red pine cones. See that? Abby's Poosh in a standard form. And some willow. Look at this. These make really pretty cut branches for indoors in the spring um, because they get these little calyxes that bloom. See these? These are the blooms on willows. But they make a really interesting shrub this time of year. And the variety is called, let's see, Salix willow. Now willows do like water. So if you have an area in your garden that stays relatively moist, these would do well in that spot. But if you have a septic system or well or like a, a leaching field, probably best to not plant a willow near them because they do like to reach for water. And so average mature size gets to be 25 feet in height, 15 feet in width, and they're hardy down to negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit or a zone five. And they like full sun, but really interesting blooms. These little fuzzy things and some grasses. These also offer a lot of texture and interest to the garden. This one here is called Evergold Japanese Sedge and it likes part sun. These are $9.98 for this ornamental grass. Let's see how large it gets. It's hardy down to a zone five or negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit and it gets 16 inches in height and 16 inches in width. Really pretty color. It's a variegated one white and green a couple of really pretty varieties of dianthus now dianthus looks like a little carnation and there are tons of blooms on here they also have a really pretty blue gray colored foliage now this variety is by proven winners and it is called the fruit punch cranberry cocktail and these are 12.98 it is a perennial that likes full sun and let's see how large it gets this one here gets to be 8 to 10 inches in height and it needs minimum of a 12 inch spacing and it's hardy in zones four through nine or down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit and it blooms in early summer and it reblooms in early fall. So what happens is after you get your first flush of blooms, you would go through and you would shear back this plant to sort of deadhead it and clean it up. And then it'll flush out with some new blooms for its second flush in fall. Here is another variety. This one is called Fruit Punch Black Cherry Frost and that's just a little bit different coloring the other one was a bit of a brighter fuchsia and this one almost has more of a burgundy coloring to it and let's see it is also the same thing perennial full sun and this variety is also short at eight to ten inches in height and hardy in zones four through nine or down to negative 30 degrees fahrenheit 
early summer blooming and reblooming in early fall again with cutting back the perennial to deadhead it and clean it up and then it'll produce a second flush. $12.98. Here's another really beautiful Dianthus. This one is by the Lowe's House brand and it's uh, almost like a really pretty salmon coral color and this one here is called, let's see, Super Trooper Silver Pink Dianthus. It is $8.98, a mounding perennial. It likes full sun and it gets to be 10 to 14 inches in height and 10 to 12 inches in width, hardy down to a zone six. Here's a wild plant that they have in their ornamental grasses section. See how that looks like a really curly, twisty kind of green plant there? It is called the Big Twister Rush. It's an ornamental grass for $9.98 and it likes full sun. It is really cool. Now, I don't know what the growth habit is with this because I've never grown it before, but I imagine this to make a really pretty container grass. Look at that. Really interesting. Big Twister Rush is a full sun perennial. And let's see, how big does it get? Is it a perennial? Let's find out. Oh yeah, it is in our zone because I'm in a zone six and this is hardy down to a zone five or negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. It gets to be 18 to 24 inches in height and 12 to 24 inches in width. Definitely a really cool size for a container. Look at that. You can see it here actually used in a container. Big Twister Rush. Here it is with a cleaner backdrop so you can really see what it looks like. It's really cool and some ground covers. Now these are a wonderful alternative to mulch. If you plant ground covers over time, these will spread, suppressing weeds and keeping the roots of your plants cool and will eliminate the need for as much mulch. So this here is a tri-colored sedum. Um, at 448 for these small containers, these are small, but they also makes it really easy for them to be planted because you're not dealing with a whole big root ball. Um, this one likes full sun. It says it's a ground cover. And let's see what the size on it gets to be. Usually they're not tall, they're just spreading or horizontal growth that they put on. So it says it gets to be four inches in height and 18 inches in width. It is water wise and it would be great to use in a rock garden because it can tolerate some drought. Hardy down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit, blooms in summer, probably just has a really tiny little bloom, but that's a really pretty looking sedum. And one that I have a lot of experience with. I have it growing in many spots in my garden and I absolutely love it. This is a perennial alternative to the annual lemon coral sedum, Angelina stone crop sedum. These stay evergreen for me in my zone six garden. What happens is in the summer and in spring, they start getting this really beautiful, vibrant yellow. And as the temperatures cool off in late fall and in winter, they will turn a bronze orange color. Really pretty, really interesting. They also get a really tiny little yellow bloom. I absolutely love these. And sedum is so easy to propagate. You see these little pieces that look like they're about to fall off or break off? All you would have to do is stick that in some soil. It'll begin rooting and there you go, a new plant. Now these, as they spread, they will also root into the ground and they become sort of like a mat. Um, they have more of a horizontal growth habit than a vertical. Now let's see the size on these. Want full sun, a well-draining soil. Any kind of sedum does not like a lot of moisture. If they get too much moisture, they will rot. So sedum is definitely a plant that's great for a rock garden or for a dry, well-draining soil and in full sun. It blooms in summer. It gets to be six inches in height and three um, feet in width. Hardy down to zero degrees Fahrenheit. These are also 448 for this small quart size container, I believe it is. Angelina stone crop sedum. There's another variety of sedum that actually looks really beautiful with the yellow. It is a blue version, and this one here is called blue spruce sedum. Also 448, likes full sun, and is a ground cover. And it gets to be six inches in height and 18 inches in width. So it doesn't look like it spreads quite as far. But again, you break off a little piece, you stick it in soil, really easy for it to root and get more plants. And it is hardy down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Blue spruce sedum. Some Irish moss. Now this is something that I've never seen sold as a ground cover at the local box store. And this is a great option to put between um, flagstones or paved stones, any kind of stepping stone in the garden. Now this is a great ground cover, but it can't take a lot of foot traffic. So you'd wanna plant it between stepping stones and let it fill in sort of as a green carpet. It would look really pretty. It has a really soft appearance. Now this here likes shade. This is a shade ground cover. 
So this Irish moss here is a, um, it says that it's a matte forming perennial that bears solitary white flowers in summer. Excellent choice for a low ground cover, rock garden, or between paving stones. It likes semi-moist soil, one to three hours of morning sun, and it gets to be one inch in height and eight to 12 inches in width. Hardy down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. 448. Another favorite ground cover in my garden is Lamium, also known as Dead Nettle. Now this one here is called Pink Pewter Spotted Dead Nettle. These are 448. Now these like part sun and you get these really beautiful sil silvery leaves and the leaves are quite large and they bloom. You get these little small blooms. Now there are pink blooms and even purple blooms. I have one called um, Purple Dragon in my garden that has really large silvery leaves with a little purple bloom. Really beautiful. And let's see how large these get. I've also divided mine a bunch of times and plugged them in different spots so that I can spread. Um, it makes a wonderful ground cover. It likes three to six hours of morning sun, low watering once established, and they get to be six to eight inches in height and 12 inches in width. They bloom spring, summer, and fall. I do get sporadic blooming out of mine and it is hardy down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. I even have a golden nettle or dead nettle lamium variety that's really beautiful as well. So this one here is a great ground cover looking for some annual hanging baskets they have some hanging baskets of pansies in assorted colors for $12.98 look at this one so beautiful with this darker deep purple and the lighter purple and this one here oh I love that one so pretty this one is a little daintier and this really beautiful creamy white with the purple center and these are a little more cold tolerant. So if you wanna put something out now, while the temperatures are still a little bit cooler, these would be a great option for some early spring color. And another really beautiful annual, ranunculus. It actually looks like a rose. It even looks like a tissue paper flower because of how delicate and how many blooms, it, how many petals it has on the bloom, really pretty. Now they come in different colors. This actually is a small whiskey barrel planter of them with mixed colors and there are tons of buds on here. So they're getting ready to open up. Look at this, such beautiful colors. And let's see how much these are, $16.98 for this small whiskey barrel planter of ranunculus. And they like full sun. Look at this yellow one. Look at all these ruffles of petals, stunning. A really cool nine bark. Usually when you see nine barks, they have red foliage. Um, I, have a, I have two in my garden that are red, the tiny wine nine bark and the summer wine nine bark. But this one actually has a yellow green foliage. And this is by Monrovia. And this one is called Raspberry Lemonade Nine Bark. It gets really beautiful blooms in spring. And then the rest of the year, it just has this interesting serrated type foliage. Now what happens with most plants that bloom, they will get small leaves first when they bloom and then the leaves get slightly larger as the blooms fade and let's see this one here gets to, it likes full sun and it is hardy in usda growing zones three through seven hardy down to negative 40 degrees fahrenheit and it gets four by four in size my store has a spring fest door buster on some fiddle leaf figs so if you wanted to put some of these out on your patio for the summer these do really well and grow really well in the summer outside in a part shade location uh, two for 30 so great price on these and they look pretty healthy and some annuals, they have some marigolds in. They have both yellow and orange, and these are a 12 pack for $13.98. So it's just a little more than a dollar a plant, which, you know, when you grow from seed, it takes time and energy, so that's not a terrible price. And this is a golden yellow one. And some petunias, and it looks like these are eight packs for $3.98. Now, petunias are a warm weather annual, and while these have probably been hardened off, I would still say to keep an eye on the weather, and if it gets to be too cold at night, say about like below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, I would bring these in or protect them because petunias like warmth. But these are some really pretty ones. For $3.98, you're getting six little petunia plant plugs so that you can make your container arrangements, and they have them in pink. They also have some purple ones there and even some white. Here are the white ones and look at this. If you wanted to do a red, white, and blue theme for the upcoming Memorial Day holiday, look, the purple would sort of serve as the blue and then the white and red. They even have some red petunias. 
and some Dusty Miller. And this is an annual that can take a little bit of cold temperatures. Um, so this here in some zones will actually winter over and even become perennial, um, but not here in my zone six. It's a 50-50 shot as to whether or not it will make it. If it's in a bit of a microclimate or protected um, area, it might make it through the winter, but in general, we treat these as annuals. But it has a really pretty kind of um, frosted blue look to them, like a gray coloring really pretty they add a lot of interest to a, an arrangement and these are also a let's see 12 pack for $13.98 the last time we were here at Lowe's this perennial wasn't in bloom yet but it is now this is the pincushion flower or the scabiosa butterfly blue it is absolutely beautiful and this is a perennial that blooms for me from early spring all the way through fall when I get my first hard frost the pollinators absolutely love it and it is stunning look at that now this is what they call a short-lived perennial where most perennials you will plant them once they will come back years and years this one here might only come back for two to three seasons you can prevent it from dying off by um, dividing it maybe two seasons in and keeping your plant happy and going really beautiful now these here are in the Lowe's house containers and they're $8.98 and they like full sun in a well draining soil they're hardy to a zone 4 down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit and they get to be 15 inches in height and 15 inches in width and these really cheery yellow flowers that look like a daisy are almost like a rudbeckia. They are a plant that is new to me. And this is called Leonardo Compact Leopard's Bane. And it likes part sun. It's a mounding perennial. These are $8.98 and they bloom in spring. And look how pretty these two colors look together. The scabiosa with this yellow, such a pretty combination. Now yellow and purple are opposite on the color wheel, which means they're very complementary to each other in the garden. The Leopard's Bane is, let's see, hardy to a zone four or down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. It gets to be 12 inches in height and 10 inches in width. And another really beautiful white spring bloom, Candy Tuft. Now this is one that I fell in love with last year and I actually had purchased some to put in some spring containers and then I planted it out in my garden because it is a perennial. So this here is Alexander's White Candy Tuft. It is a full sun perennial and these are $8.98. It says it comes back year after year. It has a mounding shape with these little white clusters of blooms and they are hardy down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit or a zone three and they get to be 12 inches in height and 18 inches in width. Really pretty. And there are still lots of options for spring blooming bulbs. There is hyacinth as well as tulips and even some ta 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 daffodils. So if you're still looking to add a little bit of spring color to your front entryway, um, there is still lots to choose from here. Well, that brings us to the end of the April inventory here at Lowe's. I hope that you've enjoyed checking out what my store has in stock and I hope that you can find some of these varieties near you. This is what I'm picking up today. I'm gonna grab two more of the Candy Tuft Perennial. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button and please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future videos and we'll see you soon.